Your doctor has recommended that you have a radical mastectomy. But what does that actually mean? Radical mastectomy is the removal of the breast and surrounding tissue. In most cases, mastectomy is required in order to remove cancerous tissue from the body. The extent of tissue removed is determined by the amount of cancer present in your body. A radical mastectomy is the most extensive form of breast cancer surgery. It calls for the complete removal not only of the breast, but also of the lymph nodes, as well as part or possibly all of the chest muscle that lies underneath the breast. Lymph nodes are small junctions that join the vessels that make up the lymphatic system. The lymphatic system circulates a bodily fluid called lymph in the same way that the circulatory system carries blood. Your doctor has recommended that you undergo a radical mastectomy because the cancer in your breast may have begun to move into the lymph nodes under your arm as well as into your chest muscle. This procedure may result in the loss of some muscle strength in the arm on the affected side of the body and will permanently change the outward shape and appearance of your chest. So make sure that you ask your doctor to carefully explain the reasons behind this recommendation. In the case of mastectomy as a treatment for cancer, the only real alternatives to surgery are radiation therapy and chemotherapy. But because breast cancer is so potentially dangerous, most patients who undergo mastectomy also receive radiation therapy, chemotherapy, or both. In any case, your doctor has recommended this procedure because he or she believes that surgery is in your best interest and may even be vital to your survival. Choosing not to have this surgery could put your health and life at grave risk. You must make sure to talk to your doctor about all of your concerns before making a decision. But as with all cancer treatments, a decision to act should be made as soon as possible. On the day of your operation, you will be asked to put on a surgical gown. You may receive a sedative by mouth, and an intravenous line may be put in. You will then be transferred to the operating table. In the operating room, the anesthesiologist will begin to administer anesthesia, most probably general anesthesia by injection and inhalation mask. The surgeon will then apply an antiseptic solution to the skin and place a sterile drape around the operative site. Two incisions will be made, beginning at the middle of the chest, one along the top, and one along the bottom of the breast, coming together just under the arm. The skin is then lifted up and away, revealing the tissue underneath. Beginning at the clavicle, or collarbone, the surgeon then begins to carefully cut the breast tissue away from the muscles that lie just beneath. When the breast has been completely freed, it is lifted away, exposing the top layer of muscle called the pectoralis major. Your doctor will remove this muscle. Below the pectoralis major lies another chest muscle called the pectoralis minor. This muscle will also be removed, fully exposing the fatty tissues that lie beneath it. Within this fat deposit lies lymph nodes, lymph vessels, blood vessels, and nerves. Using great care not to damage the large thoracic nerve, 
your doctor will remove the lymph nodes and surrounding fat. Blood vessels will be tied off and your doctor will thoroughly examine the surrounding tissues for any other signs of disease. When the surgical team is satisfied that they have done all that they can to remove the cancer, they will release the muscles and other tissue. One or more drainage tubes will be temporarily inserted at the site while the healing process begins. They will then close the incision. Finally, a sterile bandage is applied. Most patients experience at least some pain following surgery, but if properly handled, it shouldn't present any serious problems. Pain used to be regarded as an unavoidable side effect of surgery, but today, pain can be managed with great effectiveness. And as the patient, you have an important role to play. Before surgery, be sure to ask the medical staff about the type and duration of pain normally associated with your surgery. Find out in advance about your pain management options. Work with the staff to develop a pain management plan Discuss your options. There are alternatives to drugs that can lessen your need for pain medication. Ask your doctor for help in finding a pain management class. Many of these workshops teach helpful relaxation techniques, positive thinking, and nerve stimulation exercises. Following surgery, Make sure to let your nurse know right away how you're feeling and whether or not you are in any pain. Be specific and help them to measure your discomfort. If you're having trouble expressing yourself, try to rank what you're feeling on a scale from one to 10. Never be shy about asking for help. If you experience pain that just won't go away, report it to the nurse. Pain is an important indicator that helps you and your medical staff understand your body's healing process. Following surgery, you should expect to feel soreness and muscular weakness in your chest area. Because the chest muscles that lie beneath the breast have been removed, some of this weakness will be permanent. But perhaps the most profound after effect of the mastectomy is often not physical, but psychological. Adjusting to such a dramatic change to the shape of your body may be difficult. You should expect to experience a wide range of emotions, and certainly your doctor will probably encourage you to share your feelings with a qualified therapist, someone who can help you through this transition. The surgery itself only rarely leads to complications. One potential complication is a persistent residual neuralgia, or pain around the scar. It can be either localized or general. It may develop soon after surgery or even weeks or months later. A more serious complication comes from accidental damage to the nerves in the chest cavity, 